welcome back to Atman Unlimited. In this series, we're talking about how to buy a CNC machine. In the previous episode, we talked about specifying our machine, so we should have some specifications for our machine picked out by now. We should know how big our machine is and what the power requirements are. These items will help us locate our machine. A location is everything. So if you're buying a personal CNC machine, your location won't be as stringent as if you're buying a vertical machining center. So with a personal CNC machine, they tend to be smaller and they're a lot lighter. So we can put them in a, in an attached garage, maybe even squeeze them down into a basement if we take them apart a little bit and then put them back together. A vertical machining center is a completely different animal. We're not going to be able to just lift this machine up easily. We're going to need some heavier equipment. We're going to need some specialty skates. So there's some, some issues there when you're scouting a location for a vertical machining center. So once you have the size of your machine, you also have to account for the clearance requirements of the machine. So this machine behind me has about an eight foot by eight foot footprint. However, the manufacturer recommends a two foot clearance around the entire machine. And that clearance is critical for maintenance, repairs, and cleaning of the machine. So now your eight foot by eight foot footprint machine just became a 12 foot by 12 foot machine. And now as you can see, we also need quite a bit of space access in front of the machine so we can get our parts in and out. of it. If you're going to have one of these vertical machining centers, you're going to be able to do larger parts. The parts are going to be heavier. Some of them you may not be able to lift. So you have to consider that while you're scouting your location. With the personal CNC machines, those machines tend to be a little bit lighter. So they don't have the weight requirements that the vertical machining centers need. So the vertical machining centers are quite a bit heavier. We're talking about seven, 8,000 pounds on average for a machine like this. So you need to account for your floor. Your floor in your garage, in a residential garage, is typically only four inches thick. That may not be enough to support the weight of one of these machines. The last thing that you want to do is buy a machine like this, put it in your garage, level it, and then have the floor crack and heave. So you need to consider how much that machine is going to weigh. If you're going to be using coolant in your machine, I highly advise you not put that machine attached to any living residence. The coolant has an odor with it. If anybody's walked into a machine shop, you instantly know that you're in a machine shop. You don't want your house to smell like a machine shop. The missus will not be happy with you. So if you're using coolant, we need to think about a detached building that doesn't have any living space attached to it. Along with all those considerations, now we have to think about delivery of our machine. A personal CNC machine is much easier to deliver. They can come in the back of a pickup truck. You can use a pallet jack, a couple of guys to move them around. They're not that hard to deal with. They only weigh about 1,000 to 1,500 pounds total. A vertical machining center, we're going to need a lot more equipment to get this machine off the truck and into its location. So this machine, I rented a 9,000 pound forklift to lift it off the truck, and, and it struggled a little bit getting this machine off the truck and getting it in here. If you don't have the height clearance requirements for the forklifts, then you're going to need a set of skates so that you can roll the machine into the position. You also want to make sure that you have the height requirement for the machine. So this machine barely fit in my garage door. My garage door is only a standard seven foot residential garage door. So I had to lower the Z head all the way to its minimum level and then remove the Z axis drive motor to be able to get the machine in here. After we have a location for our machine that accounts for all the issues that we've already discussed, now we need to make sure that we have enough power to operate our machine. It's not gonna do us any good to get it where we want it and then not be able to turn it on. So with a personal CNC machine, they're a lot easier on the power requirements. They're designed to be able to run in a residence. The, the larger personal CNC machines are gonna run on 220 volts, just like your dryer, 30 to 40 amp service, depending on what machine you got. The smaller personal CNC machines are gonna run on 110 volts, which is even easier, because then you just need a standard 20 amp outlet. Vertical machining centers are a whole different animal. Most of these machines run on three phase. That's an industrial type of power that's not commonly found in a residence. A lot of residential streets don't even have three phase power down the road, so you may not even be able to get it put into your house if you want to choose to pay for it, which is very expensive. 
However, a lot of these machines can either be converted to three phase power or we can use what's called a phase converter to power up these machines. This machine was able to be converted to single phase power without the use of a phase converter. You have to check with the manufacturer of the components inside the machine. This is using a standard Beldor variable frequency drive for the spindle and the size drive that's in this machine allows it to run on single phase power only. However, it comes with some costs to that. We can't run this drive at its full power while we're on single phase. So while this machine has a 10 horsepower rated spindle in it, we can't run it at 10 horsepower. We can only run it around 7 horsepower continuous. And that's because of the power requirements for the single phase power. Rotary converters or digital phase converters are another option where you don't have to convert the machine. However, it's an added cost. That needs to be considered in your budget. So a phase converter can be a significant cost. They can cost anywhere from a few thousand dollars on a, up to ten, fifteen thousand dollars, depending on what size phase converter you need. Just because this machine has a 10 horsepower spindle in it doesn't mean that a 10 horsepower phase converter is going to be able to operate. So you need to work with the phase converter company that you chose and tell them the specifications of your machine so you can get a properly sized phase converter. Most phase converter companies are recommending a 2x increase over the power requirements specified by the machine. So if you have a 10 horsepower machine, they're recommending a 20 horsepower phase converter. When considering a machine like this, we also need to make sure that we have enough power at our house and in our shop to be able to run it. If we use a phase converter and run this machine on three phase, it's going to draw about 80 amps off of a single phase 220 circuit. The house that I have has a 200 amp circuit and I ran a 100 amp sub panel out to the garage so I've got 100 amps in the garage. Half the power of the house goes out to the garage. Running this machine on single phase we're only drawing about 60 amps. That's the maximum we can draw through the variable frequency drive running on single phase. So we have just enough power in the shop to run the machine. The machine also requires a compressed air source, so we have an air compressor that we have to run while the machine's running, and then we have to keep the lights on. So we have just enough power to run the machine, the compressor, and keep the lights on. These are all the things that you need to consider when you're scouting a location for either a vertical machining center or a personal CNC machine. A personal CNC machine is going to be easier to locate just because it's smaller, less weight, and has lower power requirements, vertical machining center, you're going to have to pay more close attention to all the things of size, weight, and power requirements. This concludes episode two on location and space. I hope you join us for episode three when we try to compare the differences between personal CNC machines and vertical machine CNC machines. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me. Thank you for watching.